Hi, and welcome to this clip having a look at the effect of collision theory and rate of reaction on the shape of graphs. So the first part of the question gets you to have a think about an experiment to determine the rate of decomposition of hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen gas. They haven't given you the equation for this because this is part of the question a bit later on to deduce what the equation is. It tells you what the student used in terms of volume and concentration of hydrogen peroxide and the temperature at which the um, experiment was carried out. It also told you that they measured the volume of oxygen collected. So it mentions curve R in each of figures 1, 2 and 3 and shows how the total volume of oxygen collected changed with time under these conditions. So the first part of the question is asking you to draw a curve on figure 1 to show how the volume of oxygen collected will be changed with time if the experiment is repeated at 298K using 100 centimeters cubed of a 2 mole decimeter cubed solution. So the first thing to think about is what changes. So the volume stays the same, but the number of moles doubles. So the reason it, the number of moles doubles is the concentration uh, is multiplied by 2. So 1 mole per decimeter cubed multiplied by 2 gives you 2 mole per decimeter cubed. So the effect of this is that you get a faster initial rate and double the moles of oxygen made. So you need to draw a curve that is steeper than the original and starts at the origin and it levels off at the top line on the graph. So I've drawn on my screen, you can see that my curve has a little bit of a wobble in it. They're not going to penalise that because they know that you'll be drawn by hand. It's just a sketch. Now, the next thing to look at is a curve on figure two to show how the total volume of oxygen collected will change with time if the experiment is repeated at 298K, so the same temperature, using 100 centimeter cubed with a 0.4 mole per decimeter cubed solution of hydrogen peroxide. So what's happening here, it's the same volume, it's 0.4 times the concentration, which will give you a slower initial rate and 0.4 times the moles of oxygen made. So therefore, what they're looking for is the curve is shallower than the original and starts at the origin. The curve levels off at the first line of the graph, which is 0.4 times where R is leveling off on the y-axis. So if you have a look at this point here, that's 0.4 of this point here. So this time round, it says draw a curve in figure 3 to show how the total volume of oxygen collected will change with time if the original experiment is repeated at a temperature higher than 298K. So the original conditions are in place in terms of the volume and the concentration, but the temperature higher than 298K is going to make the reaction faster. So that means the same number of moles of oxygen is made. So what they're looking for this time is the curve would be steeper than the original and the curve levels at the same original volume of O2. So this part asks you to explain why the slope or the gradient of curve R decreases with time. So let's have a look at that using tangents. So that would be the tangent at the beginning, the middle, and towards the end of the experiment. Clearly you can see that the gradient of the tangent gets shallower and shallower. So what's happening is the reactant concentration is going down. What this leads to is less frequent collisions occurring between reactant particles. And this is what they're looking for in the mark scheme. So the thing to look at is what's underlined, what they're looking for ideally. So let's have a look at how to do the equation for the overall reaction. You first of all cancel any species that appear on both sides. Secondly, you look at what's left and you add all of that together. So it gives you 2H2O2 going to 2H2O plus O2. So one reason other than the increase in the rate of reaction why the student was able to deduce that hydrogen bromide behaves as a catalyst is it's used up in step one and regenerated in step two. So mark scheme wise, you can see the equation that we've written is exactly the same as what they've asked for. And there's different ways of actually collecting that second mark. 
Okay, so hopefully this has been a useful look at a, a question that follows on nicely from GCSE and kind of introduces you to the kind of language at A-level that's required. Okay, thanks for listening. Until next time, see you soon.